What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you guys my top 10 favorite features that I've coded into my E92 M3. All right, you guys, so some of you I'm sure have heard of the app Beamer Code, but it actually allows us to code in functions into all of our BMWs, including some of the older BMWs. This one here is a 2008 E92 M3, and that one back there is a 2009 E82 135. If you're looking to see if your car is actually supported and you can code functions into it, I'll have a link down below. Check that out, as well as another video that kind of gives you a crash course or a beginner's guide on coding features into our BMWs. But for this video, I'm just gonna show you guys some of my favorite features that I've coded into my E92 M3. Beamer Code is going to be an app that you can download onto your phones and in order to connect the car to the phone, we're gonna need an OBD adapter. And today we are going to use OBD Link CX. I'll have this linked down below for you guys. And you can save yourself a little bit of cash if you use that link. But this is going to allow our car to communicate with our phone and in turn the Beamer Code app to code in the functions that we want. It's also a good idea to go ahead and put your car on a battery tenor or charger. I like to use this Fantic Apex charger when I'm doing longer coding sessions. But today that really won't be too necessary. I'm just gonna show you guys the things that I've coded into this this car and I think that those features have made a massive difference in the car and just the overall way that the car functions I've sort of tailored the experience to what I prefer a quick example would be the folding mirrors this car now has folding mirrors when you lock it which is pretty cool in addition to folding mirrors, I've also coded in features like flashing while I'm locking and I can also roll down the windows with the key fob I hold down the unlock button it actually rolls down all of the windows, including the sunroof, which is pretty cool. And this also works vice versa if you want to close it. So let's say you're walking away from the car, you forget to close all the windows, you can just hold down the lock. And it's gonna go ahead and shut all of those for me. Now folding the mirrors isn't something that's obviously necessary, but I do think that it's nice if you're in a tighter spot and you don't want your mirrors to hit the car next to you. It's kind of nice to just be able to close them or open them the click of a button. That's just a couple of the features that I've coded in this car, but let's go ahead and hop into the car, get Beamer Code connected, and I'm gonna show you guys what I've actually coded into this car. And like I said, you guys, I've actually coded a lot of these same features into my E82 135. Maybe we'll make a separate video on that car. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on the E92 M3. So if we hop into the cockpit, you can actually go over here and you're gonna see a little cover that says OBD on it. Take off that plastic cover and we'll take our OBD Link CX adapter and then we will just go ahead and connect it under here. You'll see a couple of lights come on. That means that we are officially connected. All right, you guys, so with your adapter connected, we'll go ahead and turn the car into accessory mode. Just hit start stop once. It's a little bit different process if you're in an F-Series. You're actually gonna leave your feet off of the brake, clutch, pedal, throttle pedal, anything like that, and hit it twice. In the E-Series, it's just once. With your car on the battery tenor, it's also a good idea to fasten your seatbelt anytime you guys are coding so nothing shuts off on you. And now we can go ahead and jump into the actual coding. So you will see Beamer code right here on the screen. We're gonna hit connect. And then it's gonna ask you to pick your vehicle. Whichever type of vehicle you are coding today is the one that you're gonna to want to be selecting. We are in a BMW 3 Series M3. I already have it selected here. Hit continue. And now it's gonna go ahead and read the VIN and read all of the control modules in the car. And this is gonna tell us which control units we can actually access in order to code the certain features that we wanna be able to code. And so now you're gonna see a list of different control units that are gonna allow us to code certain things in the car. We have air conditioning, airbag control unit, car access system, footwell module, instrument cluster, and junction box passenger. Now you'll see that I have a couple that are not selected like head unit and com box. The head unit in this car is actually not the original head unit, so it's not coded to this car. That is why it doesn't allow me to jump in there and change certain things in the head unit. Not really that big of a deal anyways. There's nothing on the head unit that I want to change. Com box, this car does not have a com box, so we don't need to worry about that. Airbag control unit, let's see what we have in here. All right, so you're going to see a few things that I've coded out. Actually, all three of these things I've coded out. You have your seatbelt reminder driver's seat. Turn that to not active. Seatbelt reminder passenger seat and initial seatbelt reminder after start. 
Anytime you guys get into a BMW and you don't have your seat belt fastened, it will give you an audible reminder as well as it'll throw up a reminder on your instrument cluster. I like to turn all of that off. I don't need my car to remind me to put my seatbelt on. Also, there's a lot of times in the driveway that I'm just moving cars back and forth and it's just kind of annoying to hear that every single day. Obviously, this doesn't mean that you should drive around without your seatbelt on. This isn't the reason that you should be coding this out. But if you are going to be, you know, moving the cars around in your driveway or you just want to get rid of that overall, this is a great way to do it. And you can just go here and turn all of them to not active and code that out. Once you have figured out what you actually want to code and you've changed your settings to whatever you want, you're going to see in the top right, it says code. Typically, it'll be lit up in blue. If you have made a change, you're going to hit code and it'll lead you through the process of actually coding stuff out. Going down to the next control unit, we're going to access the car access system. Some of these modules are going to take a little bit longer to load than others. Some of them are a little bit faster. It just depends on how many functions are actually inside of each control unit. At the top, you're going to see battery type. Um, depending on which type of battery you have in the car, you should probably change it to that, but I have the correct one in here already. Convenient opening and closing. So a lot of the things that you guys see happening with the remotes will be located under here. Now, convenient opening, this stuff was already coded into the car, so I really didn't have to change much. The only things that I changed were actually having the windows and sunroof open when I wanted to and close when I wanted to, as well as the actual mirrors folding and unfolding. So if we go through here, you're going to see opening with remote, opening delay, opening delay with rear windows. You can go through and change any of this if you want to. Uh, selective central locking, so you can actually change if the doors lock automatically. These are all things that you can change. Again, I didn't change any of that. I didn't want to mess with it. Comfort key eject is a pretty interesting one. So on the e-chassis cars, when you are done driving and you hit start stop, and then you actually have to push the key in to pull it out. Well, there's also a way with comfort key eject that you can code this in to just hold the start stop and it'll just eject the key for you. Not the biggest thing in the world, but again, all of these little features just sort of add up and tailor your car to act the way that you want it to. So I have that on active comfort start. So if you want to be able to start or stop the car with just simply touching the start stop button rather than holding it. You can do that here. You can code that in. I've had that coded in for a while. Interior lighting with remote control. So when you actually lock the car, the interior lights turn on, just kind of remind you that you've locked the car. Or if you just want to be able to see what's inside of the car anytime you lock it, I have that turned on. This car has always had that turned on. There's a couple of alarm things you can mess with and uh, comfort access deactivation. So if you wanted to turn that off. So the few things that I did code into here are the comfort key eject, the comfort start, and then the interior lighting with remote control. So you'll see here under the convenient closing, these are things that I coded into the car. The car had the functionality, but nobody had coded it into the car. So the windows wouldn't open or shut based on the key fob. The mirrors wouldn't fold or unfold based on the key fob. I coded that into this car so it would be able to do that when I wanted it to do it, which I think is kind of a big deal. It really makes a big impact when you're using this car every single day and you change little things like that. It's just nice to have. So let's Let's head back and we'll go over to the footwell module. This is going to be a larger control unit, so it's going to take a little bit longer to load it up. All right, so we are in the footwell module. You're going to see a lot of things that have to do with check control and lighting, um, exterior lighting to be exact. So in the footwell module, the car will automatically check constantly for bulbs that are out to throw an indicator and tell you, hey, you know, your left turn signal is out or you have the wrong bulb in a certain spot. Like, let's say you put in LEDs and and it's you know, set up for halogen. So the car will automatically run a check control and you can turn those off if you want to. I haven't messed with any of the settings in here. So if they are turned off, they've just been turned off, but that is an option if you guys wanna mess with that. There's also things that you can change like coming home lights. I didn't mess with that. Daytime running lights, you can mess with that. There's a lot of little things that you can change within the lighting that can make a pretty big difference. We got your by Xenon flashers, turn off fog light with flasher, turn off interior lights with after two minutes, interior fade in and out. So you can have like the lighting just sort of fade in and out. You can have it fade or just turn off automatically real quick. LED conversion. So a lot of these I've already changed to active. You can see here um, because I have converted the majority of the little bulbs in this car to LEDs, except for like my interior bulbs, which I still need to do. But everything on the exterior is actually already an LED bulb. So that is why you'll see I have all of these LED conversions set up. Corner LEDs, I do have 
have uh, corner LEDs in this car, so that's why that's selected. Fold mirrors with convenient closing gear. You're gonna see this again. I have it obviously set up as active. Seatbelt extender driver. Now this is one that a lot of you E92 people are gonna know. We basically have a little arm on the E92s that automatically extends the seatbelt and just makes it easier for you to grab it. However, a lot of times they malfunction, they break. And to be honest with you, I just like grabbing my seatbelt. I don't find that to be too difficult. Um, even with my Recaro pole positions, the seatbelt's right here. You can just grab it. I don't need like a flimsy plastic arm <laughs> to hand me my seatbelt. So um, that one never even worked. And this one was kind of on its way out. I just said, forget it. I'm just going to coat it out. So I ended up turning off the seatbelt extended driver on both sides and never looked back. Um, I did actually turn on the flash while unlocking and the flash while locking. This car did not have either of those when I bought it. So I coated both of those. So I know when I look at the car and I hit lock, it flashes the turn signals as well as uh, when I unlock it. I just like having that exterior lighting notification when I lock and unlock. Another one that I really like that I feel like is sort of slept on is this one touch turn signal. So if you're hitting your turn signal, typically it will only do it a couple of times. And if you go into Beamer code, you can change how many times with just a soft touch, your turn signal will notify other people that obviously you're switching lanes. So if like you're on the freeway and you just want it to do it once, you can change it to one. And then when you soft touch, it's only gonna do it once. I set it to three because that feels like a good duration, but you can also set it up to like five if you wanted to. So if you want like a longer duration, it's kind of nice if you don't want to have to click it all the way down and then like flip it back up to make sure that it stops. You can just do a soft touch or a one touch turn signal duration to whatever you want. US side markers active. I didn't mess with that. Well, Welcome lights, you can turn off or on all of your welcome lights, which are like the door, the floodlights, the shadow lights underneath the doors, those type of things. The lights underneath the handles, those will all turn on when you walk up to the car and unlock it. And then we'll jump into the instrument cluster. There's quite a few things that I've changed in here that I think make a pretty dramatic impact. Again, a lot of these things, they're going to be small, minute things that all sort of add up to just the overall way that your BMW interacts with you as the driver. So the digital speed inboard computer I find is a big one. It's obviously nice that we have a speedometer in these cars as well as our tachometer, but I like to just see the digital number. It's easier for me to quickly glance down and see the digital number if I'm maybe going a little too fast and I just want to check myself real quick. I can just glance down and right away I know how fast I'm going in opposed to actually looking at the speedometer and trying to read well 20, 30, right in between on the dials, like where am I at? 35. Obviously that's not difficult, but sometimes you just want to glance down and see where you're at and it's nice to be able to have that function and you can code that in with Beamer code, digital speed inboard computer. I've also changed the remaining range warning. It was originally at 50 kilometers. I turned it down to 30 kilometers. I just found that, you know, it was going off when I was at like a quarter of a tank and I don't need to be reminded to fill the tank when I'm coming up to a quarter of a tank. Honestly, I could just turn the function off completely and that would be fine in my opinion. There's other things in here that I've coded off like the speed limit warning. Someone actually had the speed limit warning on this car coded. Super annoying if you went a certain speed, it would flash at you and make you think that your car was gonna blow up. But um, no, that wasn't the case. I just turned that off. Ignition key warning, not active. I turned that off as well. Like if you leave the key in, like right now, it doesn't continually beep at you. Temperature warning, super annoying in these cars. If the car is sensing more or less a certain temperature, it's going to give you a warning. I coded that out as well. So let's head back, junction box passenger. So this will be the final unit in here that I've done some coding in. And I know that I'm not like specifically numbering these one, two, three, four, five. There's definitely more than 10. I'm just kind of giving you guys all of the ones that I've coded that I think make a big difference when you're actually driving and owning these cars. Now, what you can actually code and can't code is all gonna depend on your car. Some of these cars you are gonna be able to code more, some less, it just depends. Headlight washers, obviously I have removed the headlight washers on this car. So I actually have the European front bumper now and that deletes the headlight washers. So I went ahead and coded out my headlight washers. Also, I would just turn that off in general. It's super annoying. You can mess with the duration of the headlight washers, all of this stuff, the pulses, everything. Your wipers, you can change your wipers as well. I've never messed with any of that. The only thing in here that I messed with were the headlight washers. So really that's it. Obviously when you're in each unit, before you back out, you're gonna make sure that you want to actually code in those features 
feature is, it's gonna reset the ECU, the car will come back on, and then um, you'll be able to continue on to the next unit and continue coding. And once you're actually finished, you can go ahead and hit disconnect in the bottom. And then everything remains in the car. You don't need to keep the Beamer Code app open. You don't need to keep your OBD link adapter connected. You can go ahead and remove all of that stuff and you no longer have to worry about it. It's also good to note that Beamer Code has a function where you can use backups. So if you coded a bunch of things and you're confused about what you coded or you didn't like what you coded, you can hit backup and it'll go back to the date and time that you've previously had uh, settings in the car. It'll basically just reverse everything for you. So you don't need to go through each thing and individually code back whatever you had coded. And so to show you guys the actual function of the key removal that I coded in, when I stop or start the car and I'm about to get out, I have to push in the key and pull out. So if I just finished a drive, what I had coded in was be able to just hold the start stop and it'll pop it out for me. You heard it, audible, and you can just pop it right out. These are all just minor features that I've coded in, but in the end of the day, they make a pretty big difference. But yeah, you guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. Tell me down below, how many things have you coded into your BMWs? What are your favorite functions to code into your BMWs? It's obviously gonna be a lot different depending on which car you own with an E-chassis or an F-chassis car. A lot of the F-chassis cars have more functions that you can actually code. They're a little bit newer, they have more electronics, but there's still a ton of things that you can code into these older cars. Like this is a 2008 and that's a 2009. There's plenty of features that you can code into these cars. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that like button. It helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested in more Beamer Code videos or just BMW videos in general, make sure you subscribe. And of course, if you're looking for any modifications on any of these cars, I always have them linked down below as well as on my website, www.thickwhips.com. But that is going to wrap up today's video. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.